Good morning. Bonjour tout le monde. For over two years, Canadians have worked hard to overcome incredible challenges. The sacrifices and hardships of the pandemic have been greater than we could have imagined. Thousands lost a loved one. Businesses struggled as we all stayed home. Moms, dads and kids had to adapt to a new reality, while seniors suffered in isolation. The federal government had the backs of Canadians, and Canadians rose to the moment with choosing compassion, hard work and resilience. Aujourd'hui, la guerre criminelle de Vladimir Poutine en Ukraine. Vladimir Putin's criminal war in Ukraine leaves us with great uncertainty. This devastating war has created a major humanitarian crisis in Europe, and it has also disrupted supply chains worldwide, and it has shaken financial markets. The war in Ukraine is having a heavy impact on global trade and the price of things we all rely on. Canada, alongside our democratic partners, is helping Ukraine defend itself against authoritarianism. It's the right and necessary thing to do. And Canadians are responding to these challenges with the same resolve and resilience they've demonstrated over the last two years. Even in tough times, Canadians are as determined as ever to build a better future for themselves, for our children and grandchildren, and for the rest of the world. Six months ago, Canadians gave Parliament clear marching orders to deliver on this better future by investing in a strong and growing middle class, more good, well-paying jobs, economic growth and climate action, housing and child care affordability, better health care, and continued reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. The message from Canadians was as clear as the mandate they gave Parliament. Work together to put people and families first, deliver results, and build a better future. This is what Canadians expect from their politicians. Today, I'm announcing that the Liberal Party has reached an agreement with the new Democratic Party to deliver results for Canadians now. This supply and confidence agreement starts today and will be in place until the end of this Parliament in 2025. What this means is that during this uncertain time, the government can function with predictability and stability, present and implement budgets, and get things done for Canadians. I've thought long and hard about this. It was not an easy decision. With so much instability around us, Canadians need stability. We're different political parties. We stand for different things. But where we have common goals, we cannot let our differences stand in the way of delivering what Canadians deserve. That's why we're taking this step. Both parties have identified key policy areas where we share similar objectives. And we've agreed to work together to put the needs and interests of Canadians first. This agreement is not about compromising the core beliefs of either of our parties or denying the differences between us. What it is about is making sure that those differences don't stand in the way of delivering for Canadians. We both believe firmly in Parliament's role of keeping the government accountable. This agreement maintains that critical function. We'll continue to engage in healthy debate with each other and disagree on things, just like we'll also continue working with other parties in the House of Commons to reach consensus and make progress together. This is what working together constructively is all about. And we look forward to working with any parliamentarian from any party who wants to deliver for the good of all Canadians. Today, I'm announcing that the Liberal Party has come to an agreement with the NDP in order to start producing results. Starting now, this agreement 
is one of supply and confidence, begins now and will uh, last until the end of this parliament in 2025. Thus, the government will be able to function stably and predictably in order to deliver the goods for Canadians. I want to be clear, this agreement does not uh, put in question our basic values, the values of our two parties. We can debate in a healthy way and disagree on some items, but Canadians elected this government so that it would produce results, and that is what we that is why, rather, we came to this agreement. When increasing polarization, dysfunction, or obstruction dominate our parliament, when toxic par toxic partisanship prevents us from agreeing on simple truths and facts. When Parliament doesn't work properly, progress stalls on the important and urgent issues Canadians expect solutions to. This agreement is about focusing on what we agree on instead of what we disagree on, on what unites us instead of on what divides us. Every piece of legislation will continue to get the scrutiny it merits. Committees will continue to do their essential work. And members of Parliament will continue representing their constituents and holding the government to account. Our priorities are the same as those the Canadians um, said they wanted when they voted this Parliament in. We have to invest in health care in order to relieve the pressure on the health care system, pressure caused by the pandemic. Canadians deserve to get the care they need, and we need to look at the numbers of, doc of doctors and other health care personnel. Together, we can continue to progress towards a universal health care system, but we also want to start a new dental care regime for low-income Canadians. We know that rising housing costs are putting real pressure on Canadians, so we'll keep building affordable housing. We'll also crack down on unfair practices and implement a home buyer's bill of rights. And we'll deliver changes that make owning a home more accessible for middle-class families and first-time home buyers. Families can count on us to continue delivering the change they deserve. That's why we'll keep investing so that $10 a day childcare is a reality for all families in Canada. Because we believe that every child should get the best start in life and that every parent, especially every mom, should be able to afford to pursue the career they want. On va lutter contre la, la crise climatique. We will fight climate change and try to create well-paid jobs for the middle class. We want to expedite the uh, elimination of subsidies, increase training opportunities for workers, and help families make their homes more energy efficient. And of course, we will continue our work to reach our climate objectives. Our deal for Canadian workers, including ensuring that 10 days of paid sick leave for all federally regulated workers starts as soon as possible this year and continuing to support labour unions. We will keep moving forward on truth and reconciliation with First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. As part of this, we'll make more investments in Indigenous housing this year, continue addressing violence against Indigenous women and girls, and be there to support the survivors of the residential school system. We will deliver a fairer tax system for the middle class by addressing the profits made by financial institutions during the pandemic, and we will work together to strengthen our democracy and eliminate barriers to voting and participation. All these are things that we had in our platform. All these are things that we committed to Canadians that we would work hard on and constructively on. And that's what this agreement is about. It's about fulfilling the clear mandate Canadians gave Parliament by improving the way we do politics so we can act now to deliver good jobs, climate action, 
more affordable housing and childcare, a stronger middle class, and a better, more prosperous future for everyone.